Let's just start with this story. It, it was it was kind of hard. I don't know if we wanted to lead with this because it is a bit of conjecture, but it is incredibly interesting. Take a look at this from End Wokeness. The number of voters registering without a photo ID is skyrocketing in three key swing states, Arizona, Texas, and Pennsylvania. I just really want to point out Texas, a swing state. That's crazy. Since the start of 2024, 1,250,000 people have registered in Texas without an ID. In Pennsylvania, 580,000. In Arizona, 220,000. HAVV, that's Help Assisting Voters of Verification or something like that, allows voters to register with a social security number, four digits. I illegal immigrants are not able to get licenses there, but they can get social security cards for work authorization permits. The data is publicly available. We have this tweet from Paul A. Zipila, probably pronouncing that wrong. He says 227,000 77 people in Texas registered to vote without a photo ID during the week of March 16th, 2024. Nothing to worry about here whatsoever. Totally legitimate. He says, to clarify, see the explanations of terms and associated columns, then see the blue highlighted row. That's Texas. The 227,000 are total transactions with 196,000 matches, 192,000 single match alive. So it appears as many as 196,000 people registered to vote without a photo ID. There were 30,000 total non-matches. That would imply of the, the 30,000 non-matches are people who tried to register with fake social security numbers or for whatever reason submitted a registration form with a social security number on it and it got rejected by the social security administration. So take a look at this. This is the website. I pulled up the week ending March 16th. This is ssa.gov. This is the Help America Vote Verification Transactions by State. And let's just make sure we have this, this, this correctly. When it says, uh, um, well, where is the uh, total non-matches, total, total number of verification requests where there is no match in our records on the name, last four digits of the social security, social security number or date of birth. So I'll stress that again. When they highlight 30, th actually, I can just pull it up right here. Let's, uh, let's, let's jump to uh, Texas and we can see total non-matches for Texas. 30,499 in one week. That's like 15 times more than the next greatest. I mean, that's more than any. Tennessee has zero. It's as many as Pennsylvania even just had registered is the amount of fraudulent attempts. No, no, no. In no Texas. They, they, they may not be fraudulent. Yeah. May not be. Many fraudulent. of them could be someone put their number down wrong. Okay. And it came back and got rejected. However, holy crap. 1.2 million in Texas since the start of this year. I think this is important because. It may be nothing. We don't know. Uh, Scott Pressler chimed in. He says, people need to understand that you do not need a photo ID to register to vote. In order to register to vote, you need either a driver's license or the last four of your social security number. If someone does not have a driver's license, they use social security number. For voter registration, there is also a box that voters must check to indicate they're American citizens. As someone who registers voters across the country, I know this information firsthand. Furthermore, we are also registering a lot of Amish to vote. Amish do not have a photo ID. I'm not saying these numbers reflect Amish voter registration. The information above just serves to point to other ways people may register to vote. I have reached out to two congressmen about the issue. So before anybody jumps the gun, the first thing I want to point out is there could be a regular, say, 30-year-old dude living in uh, you know the outskirts of Austin, Republican, and he's like, I'm going to register to vote. And they say, you can use your ID or your social security number. He's like, I'll use my social. It's easier. Last four, I've got to pull up my ID. I've got to put in all those numbers. I'll just do that, right? So this could be totally on the level. Again, that being said, I think considering the shadow campaign Time Magazine wrote about and the fact that we're seeing these massive numbers in key swing states in places like Texas, Arizona and Pennsylvania, which is clearly here reflected, Missouri, uh, interestingly, has a large number as well. I think we definitely want to pay attention to this. Um, I don't know that anyone actually caught anything, but I certainly think this should be investigated now. Yeah, the social security. I also number, don't think it will be. This is no. what I'm wondering if I'm in Texas and I'm like, hi, my name is Nick Freitas and I have your social somehow. And yeah. I'm like, and these are the last four digits of my social security number and I vote this way. Can I do that? Is that what they're letting people do? 
Well, you got to understand, like in a place like Virginia, where we now have same day voter registration, the, the bottom line is, is that you're going to go through this process. And unless they have a way to, to really check this automatically right off the bat, which quite frankly, if they show up to a polling location to do this, they're not going to be able to get that instant verification. And they may give you a provisional ballot, but then you figure all that out. That gets counted in what, three days later when they've already declared the, the winner, they're going to come back and really scrutinize that. No, they're only going to scrutinize it to the degree that they want to scrutinize it. And that's that's the problem with all of this. When you make it easy to cheat, it doesn't mean that everyone cheats, but enough people can cheat and enough other people look at that and go, something is wrong with this system. There doesn't seem to be sufficient accountability. There doesn't be sufficient transparency. And so you you actually end up undermining the process even if you haven't done something wrong. And I think it's only going to get worse, especially right. when you're looking at a place like Texas. I mean... It, yeah, it's interesting that we live in a, a culture and society that says... Uh, there has to be a nefarious reason that this looks out of whack, right? Mm -hmm. Like we are aware enough now that there is, uh, there are errors that occur in voter registration and that some people may benefit from that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that fear is going to, you know, you would hope that it would drive people to the polls. So it's yeah. something's wrong. I've got to act. On the other hand, you know, when you look at a number like 30,000 in Texas, when other states haven't registered anybody, it looks extremely odd, especially given uh, the situation at the border, which the, which Texas has to respond to. 190,000. The 30,000 is just the people that turned came back. Right. I, I don't. So you're saying, Nick, like because it's at a polling station, they don't have enough data time or equipment to be like to verify so if I give them a social and a fake name. So obviously with this, with Texas, we're talking about March, right? So they're they're going to the DMV or wherever it is in order, order to register. Each state is a little bit different on, on how you're going to register. But like in a place like Virginia, where we have same day voter registration and you can walk all the way up to the polling location, register that day and then vote you're not going to get the same degree of of verification that you would through a regular process where you actually have adequate time. And so sometimes the way they try to do that is they'll give you a provisional ballot and you're supposed to keep the provisional ballots, you know, separate. And then you go through those after the fact and they're supposed to go through additional scrutiny. Again, where, where people are losing trust with this, I'll give you, I'll give you a very personal case from 2020, right? This was the year in, in Virginia. It's COVID. We had a bunch of, uh, we had a special session where Democrats changed the voting laws in Virginia, like significantly, uh, it's so bad that a judge came back after the fact and said, yeah, you probably shouldn't have done it this way, but we're not going to change anything. Um, because the votes have already been cast. We had a thumb drive in Henrico County show up with 15,000 votes, right? Which they claimed uh, we have all the corresponding voter ID numbers. We, okay, fine. But what do you mean you mislabeled a, a thumb drive with 15,000 votes? Because you can vote up to 45 days before the election in Virginia. And so there's serious questions about chain of custody. There's serious mm -hmm. questions about potential data manipulation. And if they would have found the thumb drive, had the results been different. Yeah. Well, and, and the and the issue, I, I had a reporter come and, and she was so furious after January 6th. And oh my gosh, I'm like, look. And she goes, do you really think there was voter fraud all over the place? And that guy said, I have never claimed that voter fraud cost me the election. All right. I've never claimed that. I said, but can I ask you a question? If instead on election night, I had been down and I had been down. Right, because I was leading in the I was leading in the uh, vote counts. If I had been down, and then all of a sudden a thumb drive showed up in the reddest county in the district with just enough votes to get me over, so I won. Would you have written an article about wow, we really need to change the whole chain of custody? Well, yeah, that probably would have been yeah, but you did it right. You you never do. This only works in one direction, and that's that's another reason why people are skeptical. Now here's something interesting: single match deceased. What does that mean? Single match found deceased means the total number of verification requests where there is only one match in our records on name, date of birth, and last four digits of social security number, and the number holder is deceased. Why, if we jump over to Texas, 4,571. Now, how is that anything other than, than fraud? Yeah, okay, no, 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 like no hold on, hold on. So, somebody registered, put it in the mailbox, gawk, drop dead right there. Medical examiner says deceased by the time it made it yep. to SSA verification. They were like, ah, that person is listed as dead. Perhaps. I'm sorry. I just don't buy that. No. Occam's well, razor would suggest that people are filling out forms for dead people. And also, maybe that <laughs> happens, what, 10 times? Let's right, say. right. Yeah. 4,000? That seems like maybe too many. Well, yeah. and the, the other thing to keep in mind, too, is that they actively, like, like organizations actively go to you know retirement homes. They actively go to assisted living facilities. And they register people... Who, who may not be fully cognizant of what is actually yep. going on. It is, it is strongly possible that, uh, because there, there was, there was something about, um, 
In 2020, a bunch of people on the right who, of course, were very concerned about the results were saying dead people voted. And they did. Do you know what happened? People were alive, voted, and then died. Mm -hmm. And then a month later, they were like, hey, this person voted early. And then it turns out they were actually dead. It's like, well, yeah, they were alive at the time and then died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But these numbers are very strange. Look, if you put Texas and Pennsylvania, because Pennsylvania, this thing is the next most uh, voter registration. You've got about six times more people voted registered in Texas than in Pennsylvania, six times, but a hu- 300 times more dead people. That's interesting. Yeah. So it's in six- Pennsylvania, only 16 came back from deceased registered registrations from deceased that, people. And what that's, did I say? 10 is like what I would expect. Yeah, maybe yeah. people that, who, that, who that, yeah. that's a red flag anomaly. Those aren't supposed to that amount of deceased voter incomings is not. I'll just say right now. N- normal. We don't know exactly what the data means. It's interesting. <clears throat> However, I would not be surprised if come November, they say Texas went blue. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is what the people have been warning about for a long time. And I think because we think of Texas as the Wild West, they're always like, no, Texas will never go blue. Ha ha ha. ha. But Texas has changed a lot, right? Especially since 2016, especially since uh, COVID. I mean, there were a, a large number. I mean, I lived in Texas for a little while and I can't tell you how many people were like, oh, yeah, I just moved here from California. And that has only increased. I mean, we know that in the in the sphere that we work in, uh, people who are not necessarily from Texas saw Texas as a better place to live and went. I, I think, of course, the, the voting the voting results <clears throat> will reflect that. Uh, but Look, again, the, the, these numbers don't necessarily reflect people changing. This this represents fraud. It, it looks like. Uh Texas only reports every other week. Some mm-hmm. people are pointing out that if you go to the later next week, Texas isn't there. Well, they're not the previous week either, but the week ending March 9th, 224,000 attempts, and there were 4,650 registrations for deceased people. Now, come on. Like, so so, so we're saying 2,300 people, dead people per week. You, you want me to believe- Texas, are you okay? Every week, <laughs> 2,300 people register and then croak before the Social Security Administration can verify their IDs. It's a strange thing. And not only do they die, but it gets reported by the coroner and the data uploaded so that the SSA has the updated information already. No, BS. Yeah, it's weird. Someone is, tr- is registering dead people. Thanks for watching this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.